ladies and gentle beards, welcome to this edition of Carl's Bearded Banter. I've been away for a while, I apologise for that, but I brought you a good one today, I think you'll like this. I'm being joined by my friend, he own, he runs Mr Stash Rolls, he sent me a little pin, uh, and he's going to show us, among other things, he's going to show us how to curl the tash, because he, he does a really good job of it, hence the name. Um, but before I do, I want to kind of show you a bit of what he's like, a bit of his what goes on in his head, shall we? So let's let's take a look at that first. The, the guy's name, Dan Silky Brown. You may know him, you may not. But please, just check this out for a minute, will you? Right, here you go. Here's the guy himself. Where is it? Down there. You can see, flat cap on. Always extra points when you wear the flat cap. I'll play this through twice with you. Watch it the first time here, just, just as is. What are those dots for under your lips? Oh. You may have got the gist there, but you may have missed it that time because if you're looking at his eyes or whatever. So forget about his face and concentrate on his beard. Look at his beard. So if we put this on, and that gives you the idea, it puts it straight into your head straight away. So looking at a Highland cow there. <laughs> You can see it with the nose up there and down on his chin. He's got his nose position there. We'll talk about it, but we'll just play it through again because if you if he wasn't onto it that time, maybe you'll get it this time. Here we go. What are those dots for under your lips? <coughs> oh. <coughs> it's a Highland cow. Chewing on some cud. Crazy. Anyway. Well, that's enough of that. I just showed you kind of some of the stuff he's done on TikTok. It's, on, it's not on TikTok that much anymore. But he's going to show us. We're going to have a little chat and he's going to show us how to curl our tasks and make it look fantastic. So without further ado, let's bring him on, shall we? So, here is the guy, the guy, if anyone knows how to curl a moustache, this is the guy to ask, and he's very kindly uh, agreed to come on here and show us how to do it. So, hello Mr Silky Brown, how are you doing young man? Hello Sir Sullivan, I'm extremely well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very uh, much for, for my Mr Stash Rolls pin badge thing, I'll try and get it in, in shot there. Just you're something. more than welcome. Uh, he, he has all kinds of merch like this. He, he has these, and I've just recently got. Uh, there we go in the background. There, there's magnets, stickers, uh, all kinds. He's even got a, a mug. Go on, mate. You might as well throw that mug in there. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> it's a cracking little mug. That I do like it. And to the side, Mr. Stash Rollers. As you can see, he is Mr. Stash Rollers himself, and he knows how to how to kill a tash. So he's going to show us how to do it. If you, if you, if you're going to learn it, you might as well go to the best. So what does it take, mate? Over to you. Okay, so. Usual pack of stash rolls. If you get them from me, it will look like that. You're gonna get yourself some stickers, a badge. You get your beard guards, your stash guards, and a couple of uh, stash rolls. Um, the first question usually people would ask me is, "What are these strips?" I get these strips. And say, I don't understand what these parts for. Uh, this is simple. I, I've, I haven't done a video on them, but they are very easy to use. These are when your stash is sort of a bit bushy down. So you get them like that, it gets it out of your way, so you can eat and drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you might look a little bit stupid in restaurants, but at least you don't have food all in your stash. Yeah. yeah so that's what, that, 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 that's what they're for. That was a, a silly little gimmick that, that came off the back end of sort of trimming up the guards. So, um, so when so you're all up, uh, having, having your takeaway, that's a perfect bit of kit in it, sticking on there, keeping out the way. Exactly, exactly that. And uh, obviously, like, I don't want to style my stash all the time. I don't want stash wax in there 24-7 no. every single day. Um, it's very damaging for the stash every now and again. You've got to oil it up, and some days you just don't have the time to style it. So, yeah. on, so what, on all Well, before we go then, how much does that stash set cost you, and where can you buy it from, buddy? Uh, yeah, there is a site up and coming at the moment, um, but everything is is done through me. Uh, and you can either do hit me up on Messenger or through my Mister Stash Rolls uh, Instagram account, 
um, just drop me a message and then and then we'll go from there. Starter sets, um, they range. It depends where I'm, where you're delivering them to. Yeah. Um, to, to England, it, it, it ranges depending on if you want extra stickers and stuff. But a, a standard set will cost you about nine, ten quid. Um, USA, it costs about sixteen dollars to send over because they've just upped the um, yeah. the price on on postage over there. Um, so it all depends. It all depends what you want. Um, how well I know you are. If you if if you're a good old friend that we've been chatting in the beard crew for for a long time then, then i do deals if, if you're going to post about it on social media you're going to get get yourself a little bit of money off there you go. um it, it was never never really intended to be um a business it was more uh a bit more of a pleasure kind of thing yeah. um it, it came out of la- it was born out of laziness really um after having my little girl i just didn't have the time to get like, stand there and blow dry my stash and, and wax it and then keep messing around um, came up with this t- this little idea, the silly little idea it was at first, and then started posting about it in some of the groups, and it, it just escalated. Yeah. And, well, and I mean, it, it, I, I sort of remember it starting off with it, but like you say, it's not it's this. Like you say, it started off as a little gimmick, but you do it so well, and you look so good when it's you know when you're all styled up. I mean, you've, yeah. You've, how many comps have you been in now when you've come in top place? Like so, you know, it's not a bad look. Like yeah. You're doing that, is it? it? It's it's ridiculous. Like it's. It's helped out so many other people as well, and especially with like the biggest thing with your stash is symmetry. Yeah. And like my my stash does not grow symmetrical. I've got one side which is thicker than the other. One one pushes out left, one pushes out right. So the the stash was actually adding a, a sort of a bit more symmetry. To, at least you can get your curls the same size. Yeah, if you can get your curls the same size, yeah. it makes everything else seem yeah. a little bit more symmetrical. Yeah. That's what um, I mean. And yeah, so it's, and it was it was about this time last year where Mr. Stashwells was really born, and the the idea for the image came out and the stickers and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I did an interview on Talking Beards, yeah. and and then it just it just went mental from there. So many people wanted them, and then from that came the the online bearding um, competitions because of COVID, nobody could go out and do yeah, comps. Yeah. So uh, America went and and really smashed it with their online bearding. Um, which was great because it meant that the charities could still raise money, yeah. which was which is what online bearding, well, bearding competition is all about anyway, yeah. is yeah. raising money for charity. So that at least we could still do that. And it just opened so many, so many friendships across the border, across the seas. Um, I've made so many friends over in America just through stash rolls and, and, and people chatting. Um, and I think that that's why I'm not I haven't been massively keen on pushing the website because it takes the sort of the the I can't think of the word but it it, it takes the it, it takes the friendship kind of thing out of it because yeah. if you if you come it's to me business rather, business, rather than a fun hobby sort it, of thing exactly I'd like you come to me you ask me about them I'll I'll send you to them send them to you. I'll send you a nice little video that I've done on YouTube, and then I'm always there at the end of uh, a message just to say like, am, "Am I using them right? Is this a good technique?" Yeah. Different stashes take different techniques. You might have a thick stash, you might have a thin stash. Um, that's where you get sort of. Sometimes you're going to get a, a thicker roll. Sometimes you're going to get a wider roll or a thinner roll. It all really depends on the size of your stash. So, um, so there, yeah, so. <laughs> It's 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 a fun little gimmick that's just opened up so many little doors for me and and new friendships um, and just yeah sparked my sort of love Your for love the bearding world yeah and 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 yeah just, uh, I, hopefully it will take me to America one day. <laughs> well, I can see it go. I can see it going that way. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a fun thing. Like, so you, I mean, you've got some cool little ideas like Mister Stash rolls and the kind yeah, of yeah yeah. Uh, the the robot one she was say won't name a, a particular brand of robot but you got that robot style going on as well yeah, yeah yeah so, so we call so that's the sta- so so Mr Stash Rolls is the front of it he he's the main man he's he's our sort of our leader Twiston his name is and Twiston. he's at the forefront and then we got the we got the Stash Rollers so the Stash Rollers are are, are the main sort of group of us that have been there from the get go everyone that got the first sort of sample sets and and sort of really took to using them and, and getting them well and then then we had a select few 
um, that I narrowed down that helped me with my um, online sort of Instagram posting and promotion there. And they're called my role models. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a cool, cool little group of guys. And they always, if, if anyone's asking them how they do their stash, they, they push them towards me, which is just great. I couldn't, couldn't really ask for more because uh, it's a, it brings in a little bit of pocket money. And, and it's great because all of the money that kind of gets made through stash rolls and through the swag and through the stickers and badges, it all goes back into the bearding community. So I'll use it and I'll, and I'll use it to um, either enter the competition so it goes, it goes to charity or I'll buy stickers and merch off other people or product. Um, so it all stays in the bearding community. It doesn't go to the big corporations. It doesn't go into – it very rarely stays in my pocket. It goes into my PayPal account and out of my PayPal account yeah. again it, it instantly. It's, it's not sticking around. So it was never really intended for a business. Um, and I think if I did push it towards sort of the business side and had a big site up, I'd probably get undercut by Chinese companies left, right, and centre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, it, this is fun. Everyone kind of knows – where Mr. Stashwell's come from. You see other people that are doing it online um, and other people that are sort of posting their pictures up and they always go, yeah, you just get a, get a hair roller and stick it in. I mean, it's great. That's what they were. They, they they started off from hair rollers. I take them, I size them down, I file them up. Um, I went through months of um, experimenting with them, getting them the right size and, and shape and what works. And you get them at the right size and they're light enough to stay in. Um, so that that's the the greatest thing about them is what their what their intention was there for. It's to be able to style your stash and also do your other things. So I will usually stick them in first thing in the morning. It keeps the stash out of my mouth uh, whilst I'm eating my breakfast, and at the same time, my stash is styling. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's molded it's, to the shapes. I think exactly. And yeah. I've always said to people, stash rolls they're a, they're a training tool. They're not. Yeah intended to style for styling you'd use combs and wax but for training you can use stash rolls you can either leave them in with a little bit of damp hair or if you're in a bit of a rush you use a hairdryer um, different methods um, will get you different results you can use a bit of sea salt spray it's going to add a bit of thickness to your stash um, you could have sort of a natural looking curled mustache where it's it's just you can't see you've got any product in or you can tweak it up with a little bit of wax and, and get it styled. Fair enough, would it? Do you want me to show you how I use them? Yeah, please. Please do. Yeah? Sure thing. So I've got these things as well, which are called beard guards. I'm going to use um, this pink set because it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, usually you'd get yourself a black set in the set, so I've got light pink, depending on, on what you fancy. So what I'm going to do is, because I've got my mirror sort of behind me here and my phone is resting on it, I'm going to come in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Fair so with the beard guard, I'm going to sort of pull my moustache away from my beard. And then with the guard, I'm just going to kind of brush it down and then ping it in there. Right. So that's, co that's caused some separation between my beard and moustache. Yeah. So I can... Uh, make it a hell of a lot easier to style and not get my beard in my stash and also because i'll use beard balm and oil in my beard i don't really want to get that in the moustache because it's going to break down any wax that i'm going to put in later um so now i'll go in with some of the bigger rolls just to start with i usually start with a the more of the, the wider which i'd call the the large rolls and when i pop it in you see i'm kind of Rolling it against the guard and to the edge of the moustache. And I pop it in like so. Like it's most people, I'll show you with this side. Most people, when they first try, they would go in like so, and pop it down, I was say. go from the top down and pop it in that way. Yeah. I mean, that, that will work eventually, but what you're going to end up doing is you're going to pull your moustache forward and you're going to end up with that, you know, when your moustache kind of droops down a little bit. Yes. Um, but if you're going to go in sort of back way, you cause the moustache to just ping up against the side of your, your, your cheek. cheek. It gives you more. It gives you more to play with then as well. You can you can really mess around with it. So well, that's a good tip for everyone, folks. That's a nice tip. It is. That was an, another big thing I had when I was moustache styling because I'd usually style my moustache and go to work, 
then halfway through my shift on the bar, my moustache would be like drooping down, and it like yeah. for me it look it'd look silly. I, if I'm busy, I wouldn't even notice it, and it wouldn't yeah. be till after after work I look and I'm like, oh, my moustache is all wonky, and everyone's seen that. So yeah, so that's that's your first bit, and so what I'd call the back roll. So you look down, right. you've got them kind of in so like so. Trouble there. That's just that's just kind of velcroed onto the thing at the moment. Like. That's just that, that's just stuck in there. Yeah. Right. Um, I've got no no product on my moustache. I've had a, a nice beard wash last night, so I've just got a little bit of beard butter in my beard today, um, and a tiny little bit of uh, the, this stuff, which is amazing. It's a finishing wax from Twisted Mustache. And if you add that in with your beard balm, it's just, you've got deep conditioning from the butter and then superior hold for it. It's like a, it's like a really great holding beard balm. Right. Yeah, so that's in. So what I could usually do is, so this, I've got this here as well, which this is just water in a, in an old spray bottle. So if I'm just going to sp spray that into there, adding the water into it, and then letting it dry, it's going to get you a much better curl. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some people just sort of put them in and then, then put them in straight with a hairdryer, like a, a hairdryer on, on a dry moustache. I'm like, oh man, you're going to kill your hairs. Yeah, yeah. You're going to just end up frazzling them. So the more water you can add in whilst you're styling, sort of, sort of training, sorry. Yeah. The better off your beard is going to be. Sorry, the better off your moustache is going to be. Um, and because we're in a bit of a uh, a rush today, I'm not going to do this and then sit here and, and eat my breakfast. But I can sort of have a bit of a. Of course. Well, what, if you got a minute, then let's talk about what you're wearing there. I know you're kind of all beard mobbed up there with the t-shirt and the and the hat. So you yeah. To, you want to tell us a little about that because I know you're the head honcho for the old beard mob uh, England. Okay. So yeah. So um. Through through my interview with Talking Beards on I think it was last March, um, I got a message from one of the presidents of Beardmob, which is one of the biggest club like beard clubs over in America. They do a lot of on the competing scene. They throw their own competitions. Um, very good for charities and raise money. Um, and in America, each um, each state has their own chapter, chapter. kind of thing. So there's, so there's many different chapters of Beard Mob, and then, then they all come together. I think you've got um, Beard Mob for, uh, sorry, uh, Mob Fest 4 coming up at the end of, so beginning of March, and that's just like a big meeting up of, of all the chapters, and it's kind of like a, a really big um, beard competition festival kind of thing, and they do that every year. Um, and then each chapter throws off their own competitions through the year. We've had a couple of online ones as well. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, through through the Talking Beards episode, um, one of the presidents of Beardmore of uh, Louisiana, um, John Fontenot, got in touch with me, asked me about a set of stash rolls. Um, I said, yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out. Um, and he kind of mentioned about it would be awesome to get uh, Beardmore over in England. And I said, well, it, that, that can be done yeah. very easily. Like, he asked me if I'd be interested in it and... And yeah, I took it on board, and I was like, "Yeah, this this could be awesome." Um, so I got in touch with one of my friends, Craig, Craig Hoy, the boy, yeah. um, to to get him to to help me out with a logo, um, and, and we did it over a couple over a space of a couple of months. We managed to get ourselves a logo. We got the Beard Mob England logo, um, and then many different designs. This is this is one of the t-shirt designs. Um, we got hats. Um, I, everything's kind of on my walls at the minute, all my stickers and all my designs, but we've got patches done, um, badges, all sorts, because um, each chapter in Beer Mob, they have their own patch, which goes on to competing shirts. So I've got my own compete. I'm a fully patched member of Beard Mob now, so I've got my, my competing shirt and my name on the back and, and all my patches, and then and you just go around, you, you collect patches off each chapter, yeah, yeah. And, and your own kind of patches, whatever you want to put on there. Um, so it's fun. Again, I've made more contacts through that as well. Um, loads of friends over in America now, just from sort of speaking to them, getting their patches, getting their swag, sure. and and then yeah, started slowly but surely sort of 
building up the Beard Mob community over here in England. I've got a couple of members. We've got the Beard Mob England Facebook group and Instagram up and running. Um, and it's all about sort of eventually I want to be doing my own um, meetups and competitions and stuff and raising money for charity. Obviously, with COVID around at the moment, everything's very, very limited. So it, it, we're just building up a really, really good foundation. I'm making sure I'm getting the right members in um, to help me to, to lead that forward and push that forward. So we, we've got a nice select little group at the moment. Eventually, it'll be nice to sort of build it up and grow out. And almost if, if we can do like America, we've got their chapters from each state. I'd love to start getting chapters in each county. Yeah. And then and they build up there and then eventually we can can all meet up once once everything's kind of back to being able to go out and meet up with people yeah. um we'll, we'll start doing that so it, it's it's on the it's on the march as we'll say we've, we've got we've got little snippets here and there and, and people all, all around england so far um and it would be like the bigger picture would be to get a bit more wales bit more scotland bit more ireland and then eventually bit more uk um that's that's the bigger picture maybe a, a couple of years be before we can get to that mm -hmm. um but i think it's it's an awesome little franchise that we can we can take and 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 roll with and become become as big as america and it, in a way it, it's a massive link of friendship so that if you're part of beard mob england or, or or any county in england and you're heading over to america for a holiday you got contacts in in every single state. There's a beard mob in almost every single state in America. You've got contacts there, yeah. people that can help you out, people you can chat to. Where can I stay? Where can I go? Uh, fancy a meet up kind of thing. Yeah, cool. um, it, just, it just caught. It's just another great way of good connections in the bearding world. Yeah, and so that's on Facebook. Just look for beard mob England, is it? Yeah, um, yeah. So I'd always suggest for people to to check out the main beard mob uh, group first, just to make sure that that's kind of what they want to do with their with their bearding journey. Um, you'll see a lot of this in Beard Mob, the one yeah. finger, which which is in in England you'd use that as a, a sort of That's an insult sort of thing. An, an, an insult, but uh but in Beard Mob it's a salute. It's yeah. a I see you, I like it, it's just the way we say hello, the way we show our respect to each other. Um, and we use it as a, as a nice thing. So we, we flip the bird in, in a nice way. Yeah. So you'll see a, a lot of our stickers and a lot of our designs and patches that floats around. So if you see that, don't be offended by it. It's, it's just a way of saying hello and how you doing kind of thing. I get that. Uh, <clears throat> I know because I'm in the, the, the Beard Mob uh, and Beard Mob England. It was like, I, was like, I don't like doing that, you know, taking a photo without giving the Beard Mob. Yeah, off, yeah. Off of me, but I think you just, well, I'm, I still don't like it. I'm not comfortable doing it. But I think if, you, if you're involved with the club, like you say, it's just meaning flips, flips on yeah. you. Yeah. Like, I don't see people doing it. And it's not like I take, take offence to it. It's just one of the things I don't feel comfortable doing. I know the ethos behind it. But I'd like to say, I think it's just something you get, you would get used to if you... If you uh, oh, I, I, absolutely. I think so. some people find find a little bit of fun in it. And yeah. It, it is what it is. It's... We, we don't mean it to be to be rude or to be mean. We're just, we're just saying hello. It's, no, it's just... Just how it, we do it. Yeah, I think it's a good thing in a way, like you say, because it has a lot of negative connotations over it doing that. But then you're taking that away and you're trying to get rid of that negative vibe to it and turn it into a positive. So maybe in the long run, you're not getting it. You know, if you take it onto the bigger picture, you're not seeing that as so much of an insult, as it? Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? So, Absolutely that, yeah. Um, it's positive, isn't it? Yeah, it's what it's, it's we try and, try and do it in throughout the whole of. Uh, Beard mob and bearding community is just to just to do away with negativity and yeah. and and stuff like that. We, we we don't need it. We don't promote it. Um, as soon as we see something pop up on the group or just just in the beard world, so many people are quick to get on it and, and defend. Like every beard has its journey to go on. Everyone has has the right to grow a beard, whether you're young, whether it's coming through patchy. Um, whether you, you just don't have the genes to grow out a big beard or whether it takes time. I, the beard world is so inclusive that it's yeah. look, that everyone's welcome. And it's yeah. don't, it's something that I fell into, uh, I think it's just after the birth of my daughter in 2017. So I think it was the beginning of 2018, I sort of 
really jumped into the beer groups on Facebook and it just opened up a whole new world. Yeah. Um, and you try, I try, try and speak to some of my beardless friends and, and relatives and stuff about it. And it's, it's all alien to them. They, have, <laughs> they just have no, they just, they, they're not in it. So they don't realize once, once you are in it, it's just, it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. Yeah, I agree, mate. It's totally, and that, I, I will say that about the beard bomb as well, though. They are, from what I've, what I've seen it, I'm not on there, you know, because I've got, I'm involved in other pages, so I don't get around yeah, yeah. like to on there. But they are a support, and, and like you say, with, with most of the beard groups, they are a supportive bunch. They may have a, a symbol like people, uh, maybe a bit surprised at the, at the first, but you get to know the groups, or you put questions, people are going to answer you, people are going to support you uh, through thick and thin, really. So they are a good bunch of people. In, in our club and including the, the beard mob so you've got to tip your hat to him absolutely to him. absolutely i've like i've seen i've seen so much money raised for charities oh yeah um, there was one charity a beard for maddie charity that beard mob south carolina put on um for a young girl that was was really struggling to pay her medical bills and we ended up raising like fifteen thousand dollars for her wow. it was just it was just incredible. I've known like so many people came together with, yeah. with raffles, and so many people entered the the different competitions. It was just it was amazing, and I, I've seen some people before say, "Oh, online competing is not the same as in person competitions." For me, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I'm not in it for the competition. It's yeah. great. It's awesome to come around, come back with a medal. But I'd rather show off that we raised fifteen hundred dollars for for a young person that really needed it, rather than showing off my first, second, or third place yeah, medal. Right. That, that that it's that's great. This stuff that I can put to the side or put on my wall or or put in a cabinet. I can show off to my kids when they get older. I'm like, look, Dad won some competitions just through growing some facial hair, and it, 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 like that that kind of thing. I think is great, but. The whole point of beard competition is to raise money for charity, and if we can, if, people, if we can get more people to enter the online competitions and have a little bit of fun with it, the more money that the more money gets raised. You don't have to have the biggest beard, you don't have to have the the longest mustache. Just just get yourself out there and get involved. And once you do find yourself getting involved, I've seen so many people that have never heard of beard competitions. Now they're throwing themselves into a few online, and they can't wait to get into the the in person competitions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's great. It is different to to uh, live, shall we say? But at the minute, we can't do them anyway. So, well, at least we can't over it. And so, why not get? There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it on a live bed competition. Like you say, it's just a bit of fun. You raise yeah. the charity, and you're just having a bit of a laugh. What, Ab- it's absolutely. In, you know, do you know what I mean? I know. I know. So you don't have to have the massive long beard or the biggest bushiest thing. You've got a bit of facial hair stick. Yeah, there'll be a category somewhere along the way that you can get involved in. Do you know what I mean? Just give it a go. And Definitely. Try it. I think I think a lot of people cottoned on to how well they uh, they were going in America and how you could simplify them. A lot of people, have, some of the competitions started using Zoom, so it was like almost like it wasn't in live person competition. But it's just it's, uh, the, the technicals behind that it was sketchy. You've got a screen with sixteen people in it, and everyone's trying to chat. It was just yeah. it was a little bit intense. So for me, I've I've kind of shied away from those competitions. I don't really get involved in the Zoom, or if I do, I'll just it, the timings aren't right for me. Usually, if they're doing Zoom competitions over there, it's, it turns out to be like two, three a.m. over here. By the time my category is is too late. But there's the majority of competitions now is just a, a thirty second video. Record yourself, show off your beard, tell them who you are, what what you do, what club you represent, and that's it. You submit that, and and then that gets judged. Which is for me, I much prefer the sort of the judging competitions because you can you can see if you come from a competing side of it you can see what you can learn you, you can see where where you can go with your beard and and get pointers um there are other competitions that i do get involved in which are almost like the, the beard battle ones where you sort of you you canvassing for votes in a way um which is it's fun i mean Facebook used to be great with the algorithm. You used to put something on Facebook and like everyone would see it. Now you post something up on Facebook and it's like twenty five people will see it. It's like how am I meant to get votes from twenty five people? So so I do do end up doing a little bit of canvassing and sending out some messages here and there. Um, but it's all good fun. Love it. I love a good bit. Love a good beard battle and it's nice to see it. Nice to see it up on up on the screen. Um, 
your beard against an, a, another beard. It's yeah. quite fun. So what, going back to the start there, mate, before we brought you on, I kind of showed that uh, that Highland Cow uh, video. I do love that video. It makes me smile a lot. <laughs> well, what brought that about as well? Um, so I ended up on one of the Facebook groups. Some guy was doing a, a moustache challenge, a, a weekly uh, seven-day moustache challenge, seven different styles. And I got I got six done, and I was I was struggling to get to get another one done. And I couldn't work out what to do, so I ended up kind of parting my moustache and giving it a side parting and, and working out. So I had a side parting, um, and then the, the curls came up, um, and then someone commented on it and said that it, it looked a little bit like a Highland cow. I thought, oh, interesting. Um, and at, at that point, I was making like silly TikTok videos as well. So kind of just used like my little sort of bold patches here underneath my lips and created some eyes and 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 actually I, I used one of the beard guards I cut it up and turned it into to the nose of the cow and and yeah ended up just making a silly video of it and then I actually I used that as an entry into a competition um as a freestyle of a freestyle I didn't do too well. Didn't do too well in it because some of the freestyle beards and uh, beard competitions are flipping insane. Unbelievable! Uh, there, there, there's just some absolutely ridiculous freestyles going out there. Um, so, so yeah, it was just a little bit of fun. Yeah, that, I mean, like I say, the sharing that was more of a, I'd say that was more of a novelty than a a novelty beard than a freestyle beard. But it, it is a fun little video anyway. So, well yes. Yeah, it was fun to do. It got my it got a couple a couple of views and a couple of people commented on it as well. And as I say, it was it was just for me trying to create a little bit of a, extra content on my TikToks. Um, those the, those TikTok videos kind of died down after I managed to get back to work after the first lockdown. And then I kind of I never really sort of got back into it. I got more into the beard mob and, and the beard and, and 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 beard competitions, and that took up my time. And then my son was born as well, and. That took up, that took up even more time. So yeah. now I've got a three and a half year old daughter and a one year old son. Yeah, mate. It, it definitely means I've got to do a lot more stash rolling because I've got absolutely no time at all. Well, I mean, one would think uh, you're not getting any sleep, so you, you must be up all night. So you've got a lot of time to do it there, mate. But that kids, yeah, like, like so. yeah, you know like, sleep is these days. Yes, the sleep game has completely gone. I always say to people, especially at work, I say to people that haven't got the kids and the young kids, they're coming in, they're going, oh, I'm tired. Like, you have no idea what tired is. <laughs> you, wait, you, wait, you wait till you have kids and you've got to go through that sort of that broken sleep, that really, that, that gets you. I think after you've had your first kid and after you've gone through that first bit of broken sleep, it, it, you just, you, you're very grateful when you get a good couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure, like, what once the kids are all grown up and stuff, I, my, my sleep game will improve. Um, but at the minute, like, my, my daughter sleeps like a dream. She'll go at 8 p.m. and then she's up at 8 a.m. It's like 12 hours straight. She doesn't even wake. My son is a little terror. He's up like all hours of the night. He just wants to eat. I think because he's, I think he's gonna gonna be as tall as his dad. He's just he just wants to eat and drink his milk and have a little nap and then wake up again and, and do it and. Now he's standing and wants to walk and crawl. He's very, very active. Oh God, no, that's just what you want in it. You but yeah, but I, I love him to pieces. It's it's it's, it's great fun. So, um, sorry, what, what I was gonna say. What does a wife think about you? You missed the stash roll stickers. You got them on the back of your door there. And everything. Does she? Yeah, does she so, I, I've got beard stickers everywhere. I've got so much sort of little bits of merchandise here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> House is a mess sometimes. We've got. All sorts going on. I've got envelopes plastered around. I'm in the kitchen and I'm chopping up my stash rolls and filing them down. Um, I think she's just got to a point now where she's just like, just give up. To, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let him do it. Keeps him happy. Yeah, it, it, that's that's it. it. Keeps me happy. It keeps yeah. you busy. It, <laughs> it is my little thing. Um, keeps me at home as well because I, like. Usually my little ones will be running around. I kind of I've shut the stair gate down there so that they can't come up. Um, most people are quite familiar in the building world of this door in the background of my pictures and stuff because because my mirror is right in front of there. My my phone sticks up on a little stand in front of my mirror. Yeah. Um, so especially if I'm making these kind of videos, I can I've got the mirror up there. I can it's easier to see yeah. what I'm doing when it comes to styling. In fact, I should sort of get back to styling and talk talking about. The uh, the stash rolls because these will need to come out now. If I um, 
if I pull these out, I've got my stash sort of pulled away from my cheek. Yeah, sure. I, I've, I've kept these ones in longer than I would usually because oh, wow. okay. of chatting. Um, but what I would then do is I'd go in with the smaller ones. Again, I would go in with a back roll. Yeah. So I'm kind of putting it at the back of the moustache. This time I'm going to get tighter in to the moustache. And as I get just to the back end here, I flip it. Okay. Yeah. So I just wow. flip it, flip it out there, um, and that's gonna. It causes a curl, but it also causes it to stay nearer the cheek, um, and then curl up as well. It's, it's it's hard to explain, but you'll I'm see it once it. they come out. Um. So again, I'm just gonna pop that one in there. So how long would you say keep the first one in? The, the, the big ones in for is that just so that those big out? ones i it i mean it all depends like what what you've got going on if you, you can stick them in go and have a coffee or have your breakfast mm. and then come back and then pop these ones in um because i say they're they are a training tool it's not just a case of you're going to stick in your stash rolls and then um, that you're just going to end up with a nice curly mustache yeah, yeah. it doesn't it, it that, like you have to maneuver them around yeah. uh, you find that if you pop them in one hair might not have got in there properly it might have flipped around the wrong way or you might have got a little sort of a beard hair stuck in so i'll always come in readjust the guards pull out any beard hair and then just get that in there find my nice little brush and then just sort of tease them in and get it a bit more uniformed um I can use my record now is about 10 minutes of getting stash rolls in, the stash curled and then waxed up. It's, I've got I've got my timings down to to a to a T now as it, as we'd say. Um, so what what I will show people as well is you, you can just leave them in and go about and do your thing, and it's like, like you're gonna end up with a nice. Um, natural looking curl stash. What you can also do if you are in a in a rush is you can use a hair dryer. Mm -hmm. um, but I would never recommend just just blow drying your your dry hair. So again, you use a little 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 spray of water. Pop that in like so. Get that around. Um, so I'm just going to blow dry quickly just so we can speed up this process and you can see what the result is going to be. I'm going to use a. Uh, Always use a low heat on the hairdryer, the, the lowest heat setting it will go, and constantly moving it like like so. I don't, I don't leave it stagnant on one one spot because I'm not here to burn my moustache hairs or my lips or my nose. Um, it's just gonna, it's just want to create airflow to get that nice and dry. Pardon? So this is where we should go to an intermission or something. Now, well, here's a, yeah, yeah. a spot for my yeah. advertising. <laughs> um, so you see that 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 one's almost dry. I can always feel whether it's it's dry or not. So again, I'm just gonna whack a little bit more uh, hair dryer. In. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit just to speed up. I mean, that side will be done. What I can do is, if I pull this out now, so I'm not, I don't pull it out, I kind of curl it roll, out. Yeah. Curl, roll it out, yeah. So we got we got the shape in there. That, yeah. I mean, we've got to say, you've been doing this for a while now, so your hair's kind of almost trained. My hair, well. yeah, my hair is trained. Like I'll, I'll always say to people, because they are a training tool, your hair does have a kind of muscle memory as well mm -hmm. so if you're going to keep doing keep styling it a certain way eventually it will just it, it knows what it wants to do yeah. so I'm, I'm actually really pleased with that you yeah, don't always yeah. you don't always get it out on, on such a good curl so i am just going to pop that back back in and just see how the other one's done because the other one wasn't quite dry enough because it wasn't quite dry yeah still got a pretty decent yeah, curl to it yeah. um, Again, this is what, what I'd always recommend with doing them. Always just keep taking them out, 
popping them back in again until you've got all of the hairs curled because I don't know if you could have seen it properly there on film. I had like two or three hairs, beard hairs that have managed to sneak in. Right, right. I'm just going to pull my guard, just adjust them down, guard back in, roll back in. And now because I know the front part of my moustache is dry, I can leave these in to just dry the rest and then just apply a little bit of moustache wax mm -hmm. just to just to these bits here so I can get it yeah. started. So I'll always, if I'm putting my stash wax in, I'll always start from the middle and then concentrate a lot on the base here and then finish off with the curls. It's always save your curls till last. I'm going to use my favourite little plug in there. Yeah. My twisted moustache stash wax. I've been always your plugs for the um, twisted moustache. You've got them in a few times, but I know you're still an ambassador for... Yes, for yeah, very much still an ambassador for twisted moustache. Um, it's really the only product I use. I got sent, I got, I won so many products in on uh, competitions last year, and a lot of them are sitting around. Just, just I should really just give them away because, because I love twisted so much. It, it's a product that just works well for me. I kind of we found each other at the right time. I just through one of the groups, I ended up just sort of seeing it and, and buying a product. I made a couple of silly videos, and Neil got in touch with me told me about the ambassador role and, and this and that and yeah it's almost two years now i've been an ambassador for twisted mustache yeah. love promoting their products um before i'd be massively on social media and, and plugging it um, and doing lots of posts but because because of the, sort of the beard mob stuff and i haven't really been much on on instagram or even even on facebook at, at all sort of with the family trying to concentrate a bit more on them um there's so many of the other ambassadors that are doing that. I don't want to overload it. My my main thing is so many people are actually dropping messages to me asking me what I use. I do my I do my ambassadorship through that, through sort of private messages and yeah, yeah. And, and seeing a couple of posts on Facebook and sort of jumping in and, and, and commenting that way. Um and I think I think that works better for me. I hope it, it brings a bit of business business to Anil and Annabelle over at Twisted. Um because because that's what, what we want to do. We want we want to promote their their product as, as much as we can. Because it is a fa it's a fantastic product, and that's a my little brush there as well that I was using to oh, yeah, yeah. to brush my to my mustache. That's that's a twisted brush as well. They make some fantastic beard products. They also make some fantastic tools as well. Sort of. Uh, I know I've done what I remember him. I remember him starting off. I was there from the start with it. I know. I remember him first posting. He was thinking up. He was thinking of uh, starting up a site sort of thing, and he's come a long, long way. He's doing. He's doing. I've oh, well, lost touch with with another little bit. I've not been. He's got his own website page. I've not been there for a while just because you know things take over. But um, all the best to him, and he's come. Yeah, yeah, really well. He's got his own it's... kind of funky style as well, and he's he's got his, his little kill cool do DJ ways. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I, another thing that sort of connected us as well when, when we got chatting. Um, because I used to used to be a DJ back in the day. I've yeah. still got my my record decks and like a uh, almost about six thousand records now. Is my my collection. Um, that kind of that all stopped when I moved away from London, moved back locally, and ended up getting a sort of a nice bar manager's job here, and sort of it gave me the opportunity to to live where I work as well. Um, so yeah, so so kind of put that on the back burner it's all still there still love doing it yeah. still still love getting getting the setup done and yeah so sort of we we grew up on the same sort of scene of music and yeah he's got he's got a great style i love i love love his little setup he's got at home and his little office and, and all his twisted mustache stuff and he has his own unique style yeah. um a great way of promoting his brand and it's just it's, it's a pleasure to be to, to be sort of working alongside him um and then he gave me like he gave me the uh the boost for the stash rolls as well so through the twisted and bearded group he allowed me to, to promote stash rolls and talk about stash rolls there yeah. um i mean it, it all stash rolls pretty much came from that group it was just a silly yeah. little video and then we got chatting on our sort of on our online chat group about what we should call them we came up with the name stash rolls and and it all came from there. I came up with the designs of Mr. Stash Rolls through 
I was just watching watching Mister Men, my little daughter. Yeah. I think and it, it, it just it just it just one thing came to another, and we came up with Mister Stash Rolls, and then, yeah, pretty much launched him around about this time last year, um, just after my son was born, and got the stickers done, and and then the rest of the swag just came came from there really. Cool. Um, so yeah, so now, so now what I've done is you saw while I was chatting there, I just constantly just applying the stash wax from the middle of my moustache yeah. uh, outwards, um, and I'm also getting a little bit behind there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull this roll out. So you see, I'm just going to roll it out like so. Um, you can't see it from there, but now the more you sort of flicker into it, that curl is just going to be there and it's just going to stay. So when I'm applying my my moustache wax, because I've already got most of it in here, just pull it I cr create a nice little foundation here, which is going to hold mm -hmm. the shape of the curl, the, the sort of the base of the curl. And then I've got so much freedom now right, yeah. with my, with my curl. Where's the best way, best angle yeah, there? Yeah. yeah, I've got so much freedom with it now, and it's it's not pushing forward. It's mm -hmm. Got a nice ping is is pinging back more to the cheek, so that when I am styling it, I can curl it forward like so. Yeah, like pings. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then we'll, we'll crack on with the second one again. Rolled out because I've got the wax in. I've already got plenty of wax coated on my finger. Um. Another thing I say as well when you are applying your moustache wax, apply it lightly, but make sure when you're getting it. In your fingers, well, there's the best angle there. So you kind of you want it all around your finger like so, so that when you are styling your moustache, kind of for me like you, know, you see I'm kind of rolling it around my thumb there. Yeah. 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 And now I've got two two decent little stash cars, and that's yeah. I can kind of I can leave them as they are for now, or if I want to make them tighter i can do you can see like i don't know if you can get close up to that one but the, the ends on that one are, are all over the place at the moment so that does need meeting up meeting a lot what i can do is i'll pull that all the way to the end i will i will say that's looking good i'll look at that one uh, i will say that i remember you talking about the, the stash wax it's a good thing how you got it on you use the lid don't you to scrape it by looks of it yeah so it. my technique is I take my, as you see, I've already got some on, my, on the corner of my lid. So I take, like so, scrape the lid in. So I've got a sort of tiny little amounts. And usually I've got two or three little bits on the, on the lid there. Yeah. I just slide that off. Um, and I start small and I just kind of yeah. get that in, into the fingers. Um, so that it's not too clumpy. And then yeah, that that was my point. I said, you, you, I, I caught, you've got a little, little wax easel on the lid. I know some people you can get them pics of it, but uh, yeah. my point is, I remember that I did a video when I started doing videos. I did one. I don't know why. I don't. I don't. I didn't roll my sash thing, but it was about the, the wax. I just put it in. But I did that with my thumb, and then kind of rolled it, and then applied it in. But what I didn't realize, it was a big lump. And like I say, it's, it's important to get tiny. As I put it in, I, I'm doing it. There was a big kind of lump somewhere, you know. So I, I pulled it through. And there was this big lump there that I didn't notice, and I'm saying, "Oh, I'm doing this, blah blah." blah. Uh, you know, I did the video, put it all together, and when I was editing it, well, there wasn't much editing in them days. Put it together, thought, oh, look at the state of that. There's this big clump wherever it was dangling. Then yeah. I was still there thinking, and I thought that's a nightmare. But in the end, I kind of left it and put it in because I thought, well, these things you got to show. I've made a mistake there. Uh, these things happen, and it just kind, you know, it just shows don't. I think I had. I can't remember if I had it to. I know I meant to. Don't uh, get such a big lump and make sure you you mix it into your hands. Like you say, start off small. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so that video still. I still think about maybe you should pull that video, but I think no, it's a mistake, and we all make mistakes, and it's important. I think it's good to show them sometimes. <laughs> oh, I, ab absolutely. This, um, especially with with this moustache wax, is and why I love it so much is I before twisted moustache, I was trying. Uh, other brands and I found that it would, it would leave like clumps in my moustache and I had no idea how to get rid of them I'd have a hairdryer in there um, and then it would sort of it would break down easier 
I think because of the, uh, the the organic beeswax and the lanolin in um, twisted wax, it just it goes in so well and it's, it's it holds all day. The hold on it is insane. Oh, yeah. um, so now that I've now that I've got the, the the stash kind of styled, it does need a bit of neatening up. I can just pull the guards away. I'll always pull them down. Yeah. Fantabulous. Do you, have you ever have you ever kind of shaved, you know, between the, the um, your beard and your mustache? Have you ever got a cut throat on them and to separate them properly, or you just, mm. keep, you just leave them naturally? I I remember when I first started growing out my mustache. I spoke to my barber about that, and he said, "Don't do it." He said, especially because I like the nice curled mustache yeah. and the big beard. You kind of you want them all to be to. To look like it's all linked together. Yeah. Um, I have seen some people with the styled moustache and then the, the, the gaff in between there. And it just, there's something about that look. It just doesn't look right doesn't for me. Like I, I've done it yeah. once years ago. You tried it. And I, 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 it was only a slight little bit, but I, I don't think anyone could really notice at the time. Maybe they can, but no, I, I didn't like it at all. Because you know, I mean, no. it's, like, it's only a little, it's only a slight, you wouldn't have thought it made that, that much difference. Yeah. It, it, um, I, I don't like the look. If you if you ever see any of my throwback pictures, sometimes you know when people do your yeah, this is me ten years ago and this is me short beard, you can actually see like this area. In fact, you can see it there. Yeah, I've got a patch here, yeah. which I, I I don't have that on this side. Um, so I've got a patch there where it doesn't grow. So it almost there there is the gap there. Yeah, so that beard head not getting involved, but I yeah. still I'll always say sort of when when you are styling your moustache, you want to get corner of your lip mm. follow it following up your, your cheek line yeah. and anything under that anything under that is your beard anything above that is your moustache yeah. so, yeah, so fantastic mate I'll, I'll always I'll, if I wanted to go out later I would just tidy that up but we got to the fundamentals and, and the basics of stash rolling and, yeah. and how quickly you can get yourself a nice curled even symmetrical moustache and so I keep looking at different angles and I'm always like, oh, it's a little bit wonky there. But I think that's it. You, you can uh, do too much and you can end up making it worse, can't you? You've just got one uh, stand back and say, that'll do now. Yeah. Absolutely. And because uh, I've got the stash wax in, I kind of I want that to set a little bit. The more I'm playing with it, the more it's it's not um, it's it's not creating. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, um, so I'll let that set a little bit and then if I do want to adjust it, I can add a little bit more... Um, but what you've seen is I haven't really used a brush to style it. Some people use like a, a round brush and a, and a, and a hairdryer. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a great technique. I've known some people that get some really good results with that. Um, the, the whole point of stash rolling is you can get super symmetrical curls and eat your breakfast or yeah. sort your kids out. You, you can do stuff. You can do your chores whilst your moustache is styling. Excellent, mate. I'm gonna have to try it again myself, like, because I know you sent you, you sent me a, a set a long, long time ago, but like, I'm not really into the curling thing. I don't, I don't know. I prefer, just prefer it's blade and looking. But I'm gonna have to give it a go. It is fun, and it, it, like you say, when it's done, you do feel like you're dressed up and you're kind of looking the part. So I will have to give it a go again. Now you give me a few pointers, mate. I think you can do, <laughs> do a better job. So uh, thanks for that, mate. It's been fantastic having us. Uh, in fact, this is. I will admit to everybody else that's watching, all the ladies and gentlemen out there, this is probably about, what, the fourth time or something we've, we've tried to do this video? Yeah, I think we're, we, we've been wanting to get this done since November. And <laughs> yeah. every, every time it's like, we did one interview and uh, the internet connection was a little bit dodgy, so we couldn't go ahead and it was like, right, we'll do it next week, we'll do it the week after. Yeah. I think with, with our busy schedules and with me having the kids and and just sort of, like, I think then I reopened the pub again and I was working and then we closed up for, for Christmas and eventually we, we got there and, and it's, it, look, it's, it looks to me like the connection stayed good as well. It's been brilliant. It'll probably break up yeah. now, but it's been brilliant so far. So got to count our blessings for that. So listen, mate, it was really good to uh, to have you. I can't remember if sent, did I send you the, the, the star sticking out? I can't remember if it did. No, we, we, we were going to hold up until we actually got the interview done. Oh, so Brilliant. Well, we yeah. have done, mate. So if you, Pass on me your address, mate, and I'll send you the, the Carl's Golden Star Bearded Fanta sticker. Just for the special people that have come on. Can't wait.
If I, can, if, I, if I can get one of their nice, shiny Banter Tower stickers as well, I'd be extremely grateful for one of those. Have you not got one of them, mate? One of these little shiny ones? No, I haven't got one of those shiny ones. Uh, I'll get one out into... I'll, get, I'll, I'll see what I've got, mate, and I'll send them all into your post. In fact, I've got some... Do you want one of my iBird ones as well? I've got some of these. I'll send you one of them. Yeah, I'd love one of those. Um, I've, what, I'm just trying to look now which ones I have got. I've got, the, I've got the Viking one, but I haven't got the cartoon Viking one. Have you holding the sword? I saw that one floating around the oh, other day. Right, yeah, I've got that somewhere. I've only got a few of them left. I'll get. I'll go through. I'll trial all my stickers. You can keep the ones you want and get rid of the ones you don't, mate. No worries. Um, thanks a lot for having. Me. I'll send you a pin badge as well. You got one of them, haven't you? One of these things. I, not them. Not the big ones. I'm right on them. I, oh, the little one. I just fell off. No, no, no. I've got. I've got one of the big ones. I haven't got one of the small ones yet. So if you've got one of those floating around, I'll definitely. I'll definitely send you one of them. I, I'll do your. I'll do your. I'll do your trade because I know you've got the. Uh, Mr. Stashwell's pin there, I'll send you, I've got the the top hat Mr. Stashwell's pin as well, I'll send you one of those over. Oh, I didn't know yeah, he's got, he's got a little flat, he's got a little cap on, he's got a top hat. Yeah, so, so, so the original one was the, uh, was the red uh, cap, um, and that was, a, that was a little ode to our um, to Twisted Mustache, because that was the first snapback I got from them was a red red snapback, oh, and we've got our own sort of, through the Ambassadors and through the Twisted and Bearded group, we've got our own sort of red snap gang. Everyone's got a red snap back, so that was a little ode to that. Um, and and another, another thing, not many people realise this, but uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to show it on the sticker properly. Um, let me see if I can just pull this one off the wall there. Not many people realise this, but on on Mr. Stash Rolls, yeah. if you look carefully, you can actually see he's got a moustache on his shoes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, feet so, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we were going going along with the, with the Nike tick swoosh and then reversed them and then it, it created a mustache. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we got a little mustache in there as well. A little bit of so, artistic uh, symbolism. You can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love sneaking little things in there. You know, you know me and my. I love like little competitions and sneaky little competitions. Yeah, and... you're know, always up for a bit of fun, mate. It's good to see. It's yeah, fun. yeah. It's, it's nice. I love. Everyone's got their own sort of angle on stuff and everyone does their own comps and and different ideas and it's it's just nice to get involved um i love to give away stuff it's it's nice to make a little bit of money back on the stuff yeah. um which which is helpful everyone needs that i don't like to, I, I can't i can't run a family and and give everything away so no, it's it, it it's handy to sort of to sell a, a good couple of sets of stash rolls and a bit of swag but i love giving stuff away yeah i know like it, it was your was it your lad's birthday or your daughter's birthday the other day? It it, it was it was Romeo's birthday the other day, so we, we, run, we, we, we run it. We run a little competition there. Did um, yeah. in a little Twisted. cheeky one. A little, you did a little bit of cheating there, mate, but in a good way. In a good way. It, it was it was it was cheating. It was kind of cheating. It was kind of cheeky. I kind of said how many stickers were on my fridge, and there was a big picture. And I thought I was hoping people would kind of cotton on and go, "Why would you have that many stickers on your fridge?" and <laughs> <laughs> I made it. I made it so it was a video, so you couldn't actually zoom in on, on the picture. Because if you could zoom in, you'd realise that they were actually magnets. So there weren't actually any stickers on the fridge. They weren't yeah. made magnets. And you got me as well. Um, you, you suckered me into it. I got it. Yeah. But it, it worked. It worked out. It, it got a little bit of attention. It, it showed off that I had magnets, um, and and everyone that that entered got one. And and I was hoping that like people that would then look back on the post would see that. Just because you got involved in it, you yeah. got something out of it. Um, so we can get a, a bit more involvement in the in the next competitions that we go. Well, you get back to it, mate. Listen, it's been fantastic for having you on. Don't forget to send me your address and I'll send you that stuff out. Uh, you're welcome Absolutely. to any time. If you come to Banter Towers any time, mate, uh, I hope to see you soon, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I love seeing the launch of Banter Towers, and obviously now I can get a bit bit more time online. Hopefully, I can I can put a bit of input into there as well. Um, so, so many big stuff on there, mate. We don't mind, you know, sharing and stuff. That's what, it's about. That's what I started the page out for. It's for anybody if you're doing anything, just post a bit and a bit of advertising, say, for, for everyone to get involved in. But it's, it's one for everyone to share. It's not, you know, you're not my club, blah, blah, blah. Or is it for yeah, yeah. In, so. No, 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 totally. I think it, like most of the big clubs, they have their own thing going on and they've got their own sponsors. So you just, you got to be careful and wary of, of what you're posting in here and there. Um, and it's all about. I don't want to sound like I'm self-promoting all the time if I'm putting stash rolls stuff here, there, and everywhere. So I do, I do kind of try and keep my posts varied um, and in theme of, of what's going on in certain groups, keeping to their hashtags and, and whatnot. Right. 
I'll, I'll let you get going now. I'll end this video there, mate. It's, it's been great to have you. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again soon. And everyone who's watching this, give it a go with the old stash rollers there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see you all later, ladies and gentlemen. Here's toodles. Thank you very much, Carl. Have a lovely day. Cheers, mate. Bye. Ta-da.